So today we're gonna build this kayak style light pole, 360 safety pole. I'm gonna show you how real quick. A um, couple of pieces. This is three quarter inch PVC. There's a screw end on it that I have glued in. This will actually go onto this piece, this cap. I'm gonna drill a hole, put a screw in there. That's gonna to mount to my gear track. And then I'm gonna tighten this down. All right. The the bolt or the nut on the inside of this cap is gonna be uh, two part epoxy in, so it shouldn't move. I should be able to unscrew and screw and take the light pole off with ease. The reason I have this here is if that epoxy fails and I can't get this out of the gear track, I can take a couple, take a, a pair of pliers and a wrench and take this off and then get in there and access that nut to get it out of my gear track without having to cut it off. So that's where we're at. The flashlight itself from Home Depot. Can you see that? Um, 15 bucks. This is what you get. 15 bucks on and off is back here. The uh, batteries go on the bottom. And it's got two settings, a low, which is, uh, I believe, 80 lumens, and a high, which is 330. You should be able to run it on low. I can't see your face. Okay. Um, you should be able to run it on low for the trip, and then if you get in an emergency, run it on high. Because I believe you need somewhere around 50 lumens to be able to, seen up, uh, to be seen up to two miles away. So with 80, we should be able to be seen, I'm guessing, three miles. And at 330, which is high, we should be able to be seen from shore. So if you get in an emergency, you flip that high on, hopefully they can see you and find you. All right, so the first thing I did was I got the round, clear um, toothpaste holders. One of them fits perfectly snug right on there. I threw some electrical tape around it just to keep it to keep it tight. And if you see, I put a ball of aluminum foil jammed in the end. That stops the light beam from penetrating all the way through and keep going up and makes this glow a lot better. So that's low, or that's, that's high, and that's low, of course. So high and low. Um, way more intense at nighttime. So you take that. Put your aluminum foil in there, put your cap on there, and then we're going to take a piece of PVC, a little piece. This is about four and a quarter inches. And if you look, the reason that I use this, see it comes down to my red? I can unscrew, install new batteries, screw it back in. The flashlight, I'm going to take a little bit of two part epoxy around here and this PVC is going to be permanent. So then, I take my T. When that goes into the T, I can reach my finger in. Of course, when it's, a pa and when it's epoxied, it's not going to move. But I can reach my finger in and control the light. The bottom piece, bottom piece is about 42 and an eighth um, and then you have your end on there and then when I add everything together the overall length from the gear track going to be about 54 and a half inches. So a little over four foot tall. Should be perfect, should be plenty visible. Um, so the first step, take your cap. I have this uh, automatic hole punch. You just press down, pops a hole. Um, or you could just use any, any kind of punch and a hammer. Find your center, put your center hole in. That way your drill bit's not going to walk because you kind of want it centered. So we're going to go ahead and uh, drill a hole. Now 
you do want to grab this cap with uh, pliers or channel locks to keep it from spinning on you. So as soon as it bites through, it wants to turn. So we'll remount the hole a little bit. I also want to say this, because um, there is one failed attempt. Make sure your epoxy is mixed properly. If it's not mixed properly, it's not going to work. So, I actually have to clear that out. But that's what I'm using. That's going to go in through. I'm going to have my nut in there with epoxy. So, I'll show you what we got going on here. Take my my uh, my T-bolt for my track, and I cleaned up the threads because it got a little bit of uh, of the epoxy from the last time, um, the failure, not having it mixed right. So I just got a thick piece of plastic, I'm trying to cover the threads. Um, might even be a good idea to throw like some Vaseline or something over the threads, just to try to protect them the best you can. And I stick the plastic through the hole gently so that um, so that it protects the threads. And if you see, I took a like an eighth inch drill bit and I made four countersunk holes to give the epoxy something to grip to instead of just a flat bottom. So then I'm gonna take the the nut that I got from the toilet bowl, it's got the acorn on the top, which makes it a little bit easier. And we're going to stick it in there. And you want to screw it down flush. Flush with the, uh, with the top of the bolt. That way the threads of the nut as well as the threads of the bolt are both protected. Now, if you have a, if you know a better way, um, I'd really appreciate you let me know. But this is how uh, this is how I am doing it for now. Now, if you don't, <clears throat> if you don't protect the threads on the nut and you get epoxy in there, you're not going to be able to screw your bolts all the way down. Okay, so I grabbed a, uh, a nut to get that over and I think I'm going to find some something to put over that as well. Okay. So what I did was, can you see that in there? A little piece of painter's tape over the, the top of the nut. Now what you want to do is pull this all the way down so that nut sits right on the bottom. And then you're going to want something that it can sit in and not push out. Gorilla glue, the epoxy, two part. This isn't the best way, but we're going to try to just direct mix. So we got it all mixed in there, and now we're just mixing it around. 
sure you get the same consistency. Without, you want to be careful you don't mess up your th your uh, threads on top here. So there's that. We're going to go set this down and let it dry. Um, okay, so we got, the, uh, we got the caps epoxy. They're drying. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to take the tube, the half of the uh, tooth, toothbrush holder. Um, I think you can find these at uh, Discount Drug Mart. Everybody else has the oval ones and the, the square ones. Um, you really want the round one because it fits perfect. We're going to take a little bit of tin foil, aluminum foil, and just uh, kind of fold it up. Almost make it into like a ball. We're going to just use the rest of this. We'll roll it into a nice ball. And then uh, drop it in there. And you're going to use. Anything you got laying around that can get that uh, aluminum foil pushed in there nice and tight. You don't want it falling down. You're not going to be able to take this piece back off because we're going to epoxy it. So you want to make sure your aluminum foil is pressed down nice and tight in there. And what that's going to do, when the light's going up, it's going to bounce the light back down to the reflective part of here. So it's going to be constantly basically reflecting the light into this chamber here, which is the most important thing. That's what creates our three-dimensional light. Now, on the one side of the toothpaste holder, it fits on very tight, and I just threw some electrical tape around it. Um, I'll probably end up epoxying that on just, just in, uh, for you know, good measure anyways. But uh, with this one, push it a little bit harder it fits on nice and tight and then I'm just going to fill this this gap with epoxy so I got my tray I got my two part epoxy I'm using a zip tight to stir it and uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that and um, we'll come back. so we got it epoxy can you see that See the epoxy? Now you see the darker line here? That's the epoxy dropping down in between the plastic and the uh, flashlight. So we're going to set this down. Make sure, try to make sure it's a uh, level. We're going to set this down and then we're going to epoxy the, uh, the flashlight into this. pieces cut. I glued this on. This is tight. You're going to take your T and I haven't decided if I'm gluing that piece yet. Just in case when I lock it down into the gear track, I want my button where I can access it or have it accessible. Um, if it ends up backwards, I don't know if I'm going to reach in. So I might just leave that loose so I can spin it. But if you push it down in, and just make sure it's a smoother track. Okay. This piece here, I sanded it down, not too much, just enough. It's really a finesse fit. You want to be able to push it in and lock it in place so it's not going to fall out. And then be able to twist it off because your battery access is right there. So we can open that up, drop our batteries out, put the new batteries in. And then screw it all back together. I'm epoxying this piece onto the flashlight, which again is four and a quarter inches is perfect. That allows access here, and I'm only epoxying the top half because I don't want to get anywhere near this and lock the battery on. 
and then once I do that, this is just going to press in place. It's not going to get glued. That way, when I screw it down onto my track and I mount it, boom, there's my safety light. Um, I'm also going to attach the flag down here. All right, and also, if you have a GoPro, take uh, you have the handlebar mount. Take this. GoPro down there. So your GoPro will be mounted there and then your safety flag will also be mounted there. The nice thing is when it's dark this light is going to light up your safety flag as well. The safety flags are open so they catch the wind. So I will, um, as soon as I get everything put together, I'll jump back on and show you guys the finished product. So we got her mounted. Um, of course, the flashlight. The other PVC is uh, drying with the epoxy on it. So I don't have the flashlight on there, but you see, you got got your GoPro mount, got your switch access, your safety flag, and your mount.